Hi everybody, it's Bruce Hitchin and welcome to Center Lane. Uh, today we're going to look at this beautiful 1950 MG TD midget. Uh, this car belongs to a friend of mine, Paul Weverink. And uh, Paul's going to tell us a little bit about the story behind this car, where he got it from, and just show us some of the unique things about the car. Tell me about this car. Like, you haven't had this car very long. Is it, is it something that you've wanted for a long time? Yeah, I, I've had my eye on this type of car for a long I mean, I'm a car guy. I'm a MG guy. I love British cars. I like all kinds of cars. But this is one of the cars that was always on the list for me. Um, and I used to see them when I was a kid. And I remember my dad always said, oh, that's a Morgan, that's a Morgan. And it turned out it was an MGTD because they were actually a lot more common than Morgans. About two years ago, I found it on Craigslist. So I don't know why I didn't really need another car, but I, I phoned the fella and I decided I'd like to come up and take a look at the car. I don't know how many owners it had before me or even before the fellow that restored it, but I bought it off the guy that did restore it. So had you been looking at these cars for some time or did it, was it like sort of a chance thing where you saw it? It was sort of a chance thing. I, I was looking on and off. I'm always cruising the ads and things that pop up uh, that interest me, I, I, I tend to pursue and I tend to take a look at. So this, this was one of those things. I immediately liked the car, um, took it for a drive. I'd actually never driven one. Um, so I, I was really unfamiliar with it. I'd, I've had MGs before. I've had a few later midgets. So it was very unfamiliar to me, but I kind of fell in love with it as soon as I drove it. Now the car is in beautiful shape. Did, um, did he do all the restoration work or was it restoration that had been done over time by a number of different owners? No, the owner of the car did everything himself, including the paint job. So he did a really, really nice job. I mean, if you were going to enter it in a show and it, it wasn't a Concours re restoration, I wasn't looking for that. I wanted a car that I could enjoy, a car that I could take to shows uh, and, and drive around with my wife. And that's what we do. And do you see, man, like I don't see a lot of these on the road. I, I have seen a few cameos in, in movies. I know in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood there was a little cameo of one of these cars. Is there many around? There were 35,000 manufactured. Um, the T-Series was uh, produced by MG before the war, starting with the TA. Um, just before the war, war started, they went to the TB and the TC after the war. And what MG realized after the war is that the American servicemen in England really liked the MGs and they, were, they wanted to bring them home to the States. So MG actively started to sell them in the States, the earlier TCs. And this was the first of the T-series cars built by MG that were kind of designed for the North American market. Um, the difference is, it's, it's kind of a mixture of 1930s technology and some 1950s technology, so independent front suspension, rack and pinion steering, but the drivetrain is from the 30s, really, engineering-wise. Uh, the body is, even though it's metal, it's metal over wood, so there's a complete wood skeleton uh, in the cab. And uh, the idea was to sell a lot of them in the States and Canada, and they, and they did. So it's a 1250cc overhead valve four-cylinder engine. Um, it's a positive earth, which is sort of unusual, uh, but not uncommon, uncommon for the time. Uh, it's a 12-volt system, which is also sort of unusual. Most American cars at the time were 6-volt. Um, the car is basically stock. Um, I have an upgraded oil filter kit just to make it easier to put on a screw and oil filter. Uh, radial tires, of course, and I put seat belts in it. Um, some would say it's, uh, you're better off being thrown from the wreck. Uh, these are not exactly safe cars, but I have them anyway. Uh, and I've added turn signals. Other than that, the car is pretty original. I like it that way. Um, I don't have a radio. They never came with heaters, anything like that. You could get it as an accessory, but these cars were, uh, they were sports cars. They were pretty bare bones. And when you're driving it, you don't really want to listen to a radio. It's uh, just the sound of the engine and the open air is all you really need. It's, it's a lot of fun. So on this side, you've got uh, twin SU carburetors, uh, which would have been kind of a big deal for the time. Most saloon cars would have had a single carburetor, um, you know, not as much horsepower. Um, SU fuel pump, fairly straightforward, not a lot going on under here, which makes these cars actually quite reliable. Uh, when I brought the car home, there was a few deferred maintenance items I had to do, some brake work, a water pump, 
Um, did a few little changes, did some cut polishing just to bring it back. Uh, the restoration was about 13 years old and old British cars, you know, 13 years is a lot of time. Uh, there's always going to be work to do on a car like this. But if you do the maintenance, I would take this car anyway. It's, it's very reliable. Uh, you get a lot of looks and, and that's part of it too. Uh, people come up to you and they want to know what it is. Um, I always let, if a, if a young person, a kid, uh, is interested, I always put them in the driver's seat. Um, I think it's important for my generation to pass this stuff on to the younger generation, get them excited about it. I think a lot of younger, younger guys and gals don't really see the charms of an old car or they may just not be interested. So you have to, you have to do your part to sort of keep these things going and keep them alive. What do you like about that little cockpit there? I like the vintage look. Uh, you've just got the essentials, a big steering wheel, um, speedometer, RPM gauge, oil, water, amp amperage, headlights, and that's about it. Starter and a choke. The whole interior was redone. Um, a, a lot of people uh, made these like fancy wood dashes. You might see these as mahogany or oak. Um, but the original material is, is like, it's like an earlier version of vinyl. And so this dash was, was restored original and the interior is all original, uh, a reproduction original. Um, luckily for these cars, this, all, all this stuff is very easy to get. You can get leather kits for the seats. You can get these door panels all made. You can buy this material. Uh, gauges can be redone. You can actually buy a brand new steering wheel that looks factory original. So yeah. Um, I've always liked the original cars. I know a lot of people modify them, uh, make them a little fancier, add gauges. I like a stock look. I was looking for a stock car. Um, I like this color combination. I think it looks very vintage. Uh, the seats are not fancy. They're not bolstered or anything, but they're actually quite comfortable. Now that windshield folds down too, doesn't it? It does, yeah. All you have to do is pop the mirrors off, turn these two screws, and then it'll flip forward. I've had this car in parades where I've driven somebody, a, a dignitary around, and we flipped the windshield down and just left it open. It was good because the person can be seen. It's not quiet. I've had a lot of different cars, I've had a lot of sports cars, I'm a sports car guy, I have a newer Porsche. Uh, if I had to choose between this and the Porsche, I would choose this. Uh, it's just more fun to drive, it's not, not as fast of course, but it's just, I think it just puts a bigger smile on my face.